In the last episode, we covered unit tests, which focus on testing a single function or class in isolation. Today, we will dive into integration tests. Unlike unit tests, integration tests ensure that multiple components work together seamlessly. In this demo, I will show you how to fetch products from both an API and a catch. The test integrates an API client, a database, a disk on calculator, and a logger, all working together in one flow. All right, we're gonna start this demo from the last test we saw in the previous episode. By the way, if you need to learn more about unit tests, I strongly recommend you to watch the previous episode first. I will leave it in the description for you. Okay, we saw this fetch three products from API. It is a slightly different version from the one you saw earlier, but it is basically the same. We have a product store, uh, setting up all the dependencies. We call product store dot fetch product to get the products. And we are expecting a loaded state from loading state. We got the products and then we just count that we received three products, okay? This is a um, simple expectation. Now, I posted this test in my social media, in X, in LinkedIn, and Mastodon. I asked the question to the community, is this a unit test actually, or will it be a, an integration test? Why the question? Well, because we have four dependencies here. And if you remember what we said a few moments ago, a gene integration test, it is a test that tests more than two units, actually more than one unit. So yeah, because a unit test is just one unit. And, but if you are testing the configuration of two or more, then that is considered an integration test. However, there is like a thing here that you need to consider because not because you have multiple dependencies in your test, that means it's automatically an integration test. There is no wrong or right answer. I will say it is most uh, closer to a unit test or closer to uh, an integration test. In this case here, we have API client. However, we are just uh, using this test success. That means if we go here, we will always get the product, right? We were actually not caring about it. Let me go back. Database client in memory. Yeah, uh, this is cool. But the thing is that we are just uh, getting this information right away from uh, uh, memory. But we are not uh, actually interacting with core data, realm, or something like that. That is way more complex than that. We have this mm, couple of new additions to the, this test. That we're going to explain it in just a moment. This count calculator that is a provider to get what product contains uh, a discount. In this case, it's empty. So that means um, if we go here, oh, where is it? Yeah, here. Uh, it is just um, for demo purposes, nothing here. It is uh, getting a discount. So we don't care that. Let me go back. Yeah. And lastly, we have a logger will you know tell you what's going on and will register all events happening under the hood but right now it is just in memory logger however none of none of those interactions we care about it here we just care only getting the products so my explanation basically is we are not caring about side effects what is a side effect well, basically something that you do and then affects other environments, other dependencies, or do something more than just what you originally uh, started. Think about when you maybe spill milk in the floor or in the table. So you did it, right? There's no more milk in your container, in your glass. But there is other actions that will trigger that. Maybe you will mop that uh, disaster and maybe you will need to get more milk. So th th there will be other side effects, other situations that will trigger in consequence, but just because you make one single uh, event or effect in this case. In short here, I will consider this as a unit test more than an integration test. But again, there's no wrong or right answer. 
And in reality, it will depend on what your team is considering if this is an integration test or, or a unit test. But for general purposes, let's just say it that if you just care about one particular thing and not the side effects from all other dependencies, it is a unit test. Okay. And if nothing here, it is affected by other dependencies, other units, then it's a unit test. Okay. So here we don't care what's going on with the API because we will always get a success. We don't care about the database because it is suspected returning the information and none of them are even counted in this uh, test. That's a unit test. All right. Even having multiple units interacting. However, let's jump now to a more closer integration test, okay? And here you will notice uh, that are a great way to test your application because when you test just one symbol, a single unit, that's cool. But what will happen with interacting with others? And that brings a lot of advantages also some trade-offs that you need to understand. Let me first, before going further, let me run the application we have. I made some updates to the application. As you saw, I added a discount provider, okay? And you can see now that the first item here, it is now not uh, about 100, it is it's 98, which is great. We have this one here, this t-shirt that is in 17, and the rest are a regular price, okay? So uh, the application is working as expected. If you put uh, two items here, then one item here in the car, and another one, if you go here, you will see now, okay, the discount is reflected, and uh, if it doesn't have a discount, well, that's it. You got the regular price, you pay for that, and you're good to go. Okay, now I added this just in, in, in order to give you a better explanation of the integration test. Let me close this one because it is not important right now. So we're gonna create an integration test that it will fetch three products, but now they will be uh, fetched from catch, not from API, okay? And that means a couple of preparation for that. First, uh, since that here, we don't only care about the product count, we care more about other stuff. Well, here we will make some other configuration. For example, we have a logger here. A logger, again, it, uh, it will just get uh, all, record all the events happening. Let me go right away here. So for example, here we have a logger, logger uh, that when we got some uh, catch products, we got, we say, okay, we got the logs, we got the, the, the products from catch, that's cool. And we have also other dependencies here, like the product calculator. It's really straightforward, but it's just to give you an idea that, that something else more complex, it is taking care of calculating the discounts or getting the discounts from some, some somewhere else, okay? so. We just review what is the, uh, based on the fetched products from the API, we got, okay, which of those are actually getting a discount, okay? And once we filter that, we, um, we then use the database client to set the products and we record that and we send uh, all the information to, uh, to the lot of state as a result, okay? Now let's go back. Okay, there are definitely more interaction here uh, in this environment. Uh, as I said, right now we want to test database from in memory, uh, although you can also do uh, some other kind of configuration here if you really care about the database interaction because testing in memory, it is way more faster than, let's say, it call it uh, from uh, real dependencies like core data. But we don't want to overcomplicate this. But the thing is that we care about what is the interaction with database in this demo or in this test. Okay. Okay. Now we got uh, all the information from the product store. Now we have 
again, that's that's success because we we're not specifically caring about uh, errors or something like that, but everything else you will see that we we do care. Okay, database is set. Now this con calculator for this demo, what we are doing is just providing. Um, it is a straightforward uh, demo, but uh, I'm using a dictionary just to make the calculation of what is the product ID that will get the discount. For example, the product one will get a 10% and the product two will, will get a 20% discount, okay? I mean, there could be better ways to calculate this, but it's just for demo purposes, again. And the logger, logger uh, as I said, uh, it is now, instead of memory, it is calculating this in uh, from a file, okay? A real file, but the only thing here we are doing is just creating a temporary file, right? Instead of keeping a logger, a gigant logger forever, right? Once we uh, need to run this test again, we remove this uh, uh, previous uh, file path, okay? I'm oh, sorry. Let me go back here. Now, okay. Once all the ceremony is done, now it's time to, to start the test. First, we wanted to get rid of, of the logger. I mean, it is it is this more for uh, for me just to ensure that the clear uh, interaction is is working in this demo. Okay, I'm using this um, macro called require that ensures that uh, a, a particular uh, condition is made before moving forward. In this case, I want that the lock message is empty. If it's not happening it will trigger an error or the test will fail automatically, okay? Remember that those require or these test macros in suites, I talk more about them in the Swift testing series that I created that also is in the description. Okay, uh, we just make sure that the logger is, is, is empty. Now, we sure also the database is, is clear. This is just because if, if I'm running multiple tests at the same time or, or, or something like that. I need to make sure that the database is, is, is clean, okay? And of course, I want to make sure that the product is empty, right? We don't want nothing else uh, in this demo. Okay, once all that the requirements are done, now it's time to run the test. We are fetching the products from API, the same process as we did in the previous test, okay? Um, we got Again, the same loaded state. And now we got even more the information. We're expecting more uh, uh, assets than the previous uh, test. In this case, yeah, we'll still count in three. But also we're caring about if the products has a discount or not. Okay. Um, just to put in, in perspective, uh, I added th this uh, uh, new properties here, percentage discount. That is basically what you saw, uh, 0.1 or 0.2 in, in the previous, in the discount applicator, okay? And a couple of other uh, properties that depends on that uh, percentage, okay? But the thing is that, yeah, you saw uh, product one, product two will get a discount. Everything else uh, will not get it. And this is what we are expecting. Now, as you saw, once we got the, the information from the API, we're saving the information in the database. And that's what we are trying to fetch. Fetching catch products, okay, equal to three. And for this interaction, I'm, I'm, I want to review that the, uh, the, the, the lock message was this one. Fetch products from API and apply discount, okay? And this is because the, the, the first time we run this, we're getting the information from the API, which is expected, okay? And we, of course, uh, this we are getting the last last log message, but for that, we need to make an, you know, uh, an assert here, a, a require process, sorry. Okay, but now if we run this again, now that we have information loaded in database, we need to get that. If we run this again, yeah, we got again the loaded state or we are expecting that. We are expecting the product again. Uh, 
and we are just this for confirmation because we don't know if maybe something happened and the, instead of three, there are six loaded because maybe there's a mistake and we're loading again from API and that will add more uh, duplication. So things like that. So that's why we, uh, I, I want to make sure about it. I want to make sure that fetch products is still three along with count. But now I'm curious that the last log message, it is not from API. It is now from catch. And that's it. You will see that if we run this, let me run this because I'm curious. Although you already seen that this is working. There we go. It is working as expected. Now, as you saw, what is an advantage of integration test? Well, they can test the interaction between units, between components, okay? We are not just carrying one fetching information from, from API and just counting, okay, we got three products, that's it. No, I'm testing, okay, I got three products. I, uh, the, the logger, uh, it is reflecting this message. The database is in this state and, and on and on and on, okay? So that it is the, the way you, you can distinguish between a unit test versus an integration test. The uh, expectations of this test is based on multiple scenarios or, or, or multiple units across uh, your components. That is great because it's, it, you can see maybe a unit test will pass, but when the interaction is between units, something could be wrong in the middle and this kind of test will help you to identify that. Where is the disadvantage? You already saw it. There is a lot of preparation and there is a lot of things here that make, will make this test, well, easy to fail. Why? Because if I just change, let's say in this demo, if I just change the way we, we do log or I do a mistake in the logging process, well, this test will fail. Actually, let, let's see that. Um, for example, let me, let me ju just, just do this, right? Let's say that someone, it is not doing the job. And for some reason we don't get this, uh, this log message of property. Correct. Let me do this. Let me, yeah, yeah, straight here. Yeah. We've got to fail. Right. And now the problem is that every single piece, every single unit added here will be a reason for failing this test. That is a disadvantage. And that's why, let's go back to the param. The pyramid? Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Yeah, the pyramid that you're seeing the screen. Yeah, that's why the unit tests are in the base and it is the largest piece of this param or triangle. I don't know how to call it. Yeah, it is because you should do more unit tests than integration tests because unit tests will be isolated and will help you to test a lot of things way more faster than integration tests. And also it will not fail for many reasons. They should fail for just one reason, okay? Like here, in this fetch works from API, it's a unit test. And if something is wrong because we don't get the products count, uh, count equal to three, okay, that will be my only responsibility. If the login process is, it is not working as expected or something else with the discount, we don't care in this test, right? That's the only reason we, uh, the only reason we need to care here is it is just about if the product or the lower state. That's it. Okay, everything related to Pro Store. But here we have many ways to, to fail this test. Hopefully this episode help you to understand the difference between unit tests versus integration tests. And in the next episode, we will see one more way of testing, which is end-to-end -end test. But end-to-end -end test has a lot of ways to do it. We will focus on UI test. Stay tuned. Remember, my name is Pete, and this, this is Ifan Tips. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.